Dr. House took out a lethal dose of morphine and tried to kill the patient, instead of stopping him. The other doctors walked out of the room one after another. Even the old man who was about to be murdered thanked him from the bottom of his heart. Dr. House then injected morphine into Ezra without hesitation. With the onset of the drug, Ezra, who was already having trouble breathing, quickly closed his eyes. But after three seconds, Dr. House glanced at the time and started to save Ezra's life. First, he moves Ezra's bed outward to make it easier to maneuver. Then he quickly pulls a laryngoscope from his toolbox. And finally, he intubated Ezra with oxygen to bring him back from the dead. And Dr. House only did this because of the deal he made with Ezra. If he couldn't find out what was wrong with Ezra within 24 hours, he would help him end his suffering. However, as a doctor, Dr. House couldn't really kill anyone. So he secretly switched from morphine to anesthesia, because the only way to examine Ezra, who was unwilling to receive any treatment, was to put him in a coma. The big problem now is that if the doctors can't find out what's wrong with Ezra before he wakes up, Dr. House is in big trouble. So the doctors work non-stop to perform a colonoscopy to rule out lupus. Halfway through the test, suddenly Ezra's oxygen levels began to plummet. This meant that the immunoglobulin he'd been given to treat his lupus was making him worse. He'd been incorrectly diagnosed with lupus. So doctors immediately performed a biopsy to rule out idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Unfortunately, after this procedure, they still had nothing to say about his condition. It never rains, but it pours. The biopsy had already been done, but then the unexpected happened. Ezra suddenly went into tachycardia with a sudden drop in blood pressure. Dr. House rushed to the stethoscope to check Ezra's body. He finds that the right side of his heart is not breathing and the right lung lobe is failing. This means that air is entering his chest and squeezing his heart. Dr. House immediately used a scalpel to make a small incision in Ezra's chest and inserted a catheter to draw the air out. This saved Ezra's life. While Dr. House was stitching up his wound, he accidentally stuck a circular needle in Ezra's hand. What's strange is that Ezra didn't even respond to the most basic muscle contraction. So Dr. House deliberately stabbed Ezra's hand with the needle again. Ezra didn't react at all. Suddenly, Dr. House thought of something. So he took another round needle and stabbed Ezra's other hand. Apparently, he can feel pain in his hand. Dr. House suspected that Ezra was suffering from an attack on the nerves, judging by the fact that the left side of his body contracted in response to painful stimuli, but the right side did not. In order to diagnose the disease, Ezra had to be brought out of his coma. The doctors had no choice but to wake Ezra up with some trepidation. Ezra woke up and was puzzled by what he saw in front of him and the pain he felt in his body. How strange. Shouldn't I be in heaven right now? After learning what the doctors had just done, Ezra was furious. He ripped off the ventilator and said he wouldn't undergo any more tests. He also claimed that he would sue Dr. House until he went bankrupt. Dr. House doesn't panic at his threats. He turned around and grabbed a glass of cold water, then dipped his finger in it and splashed it directly on Ezra's chest. Ezra's body began to shake with excitement. Dr. House then went to the end of the bed and lifted the covers. He then ran his thumbs over his left and right feet. After this, House left the room without looking back, because this little test was enough to prove Dr. House's suspicions. The same thing that attacked Ezra's lungs and made it difficult for him to breathe was also attacking his nerves. With these symptoms, Dr. House immediately pinpointed a disease, amyloidosis. Amyloidosis explained all of Ezra's symptoms. So the doctors immediately tested a sample of Ezra's skin with Congo Red. The results showed that Dr. House was right, but they weren't happy for a minute. It turned out that the test results also showed that his subtype of the disease was terminal AA. Since there was no cure, Ezra was left to die a slow death. House had no choice but to come to the ward and tell Ezra the truth. To his surprise, Ezra was very calm after learning that he was going to die. Yeah, well, that's true. How could a man who had no hope of living be afraid of death? At 2.30 that morning, Ezra passed away. The strangest thing is that Ezra's vital signs were stable at 2 a.m. on his life monitor. How could he have died so suddenly within half an hour? Did House, who received his congratulations and got answers, know the hidden agenda behind the death? These two men never had to pay for their meals. Even the restaurant owners had to pay for them. This time, after they had eaten and drank their fill, they pulled out their pistols and were ready to settle the bill. They shouted at everyone to stand together and hand over anything of value. The people at gunpoint didn't dare to resist, but did as they were told. The two robbers suddenly noticed a pretty girl in the crowd. At that moment, they didn't just want to take money. So they drove the crowd to the back kitchen, leaving only Trace and planning to assault her. Trace's husband tried to stop them but was threatened with a gun to his chin. Trace was also worried about her husband and asked him not to do anything. The robber was about to make his next move when he suddenly started coughing uncontrollably. The sound of his coughing attracted the attention of his partner. Trace's husband grabbed an ashtray and hit the other robber on the head. 
Benny quickly pounced on the other robber to the ground. Teresa's husband did not show any mercy to the robber who wanted to hurt his wife. He kept smashing the back of the robber's head into the ground. It was only when someone stopped him that he realized that his wife was leaning against the wall in pain, making it difficult for her to breathe. Jeremy then rushed his wife to the hospital. As soon as they arrived at the hospital, Dr. Foreman put Trace, who was having trouble breathing, on a treadmill. This caused her stomach pains to increase with every step she took. And Dr. Foreman kept speeding up the treadmill. Her husband was devastated and helpless. He yelled at Foreman to stop. Even though Dr. Foreman explained that he was doing it to see if Trace would have another attack when her heart rate increased, Jeremy couldn't bear to see his wife suffer. So a heated argument erupted with Foreman. While they were arguing, Jeremy suddenly felt a sharp pain in his stomach. He had the same symptoms as his wife. The couple had the same disease. This means that if they didn't catch it from each other, they must have gotten it in the same place. So the doctors went to both of their homes to check for any toxins that might be in their environment. And they screened their bodies for sexually transmitted diseases. In the end, all the tests came up empty. And that night, something strange happened. Trace opened her eyes suddenly seeing her husband's father. In the middle of the night, he sternly warned Trace to leave his son. Then he went straight to his son's bedside and grabbed his arm. He broke his son's arm right in front of Trace. Trace screamed in terror. The doctor on duty rushed into the room when he heard what was going on, but he didn't see anything. It turned out that everything that had just happened was Trace's hallucination. Her husband continued to reassure her, and Trace slowly regained her composure. Just when they thought everything was back to normal, they realized that Trace's mental state was abnormal. Her eyes gradually became dull, and the next moment she fell into a coma. No matter who called her, she didn't respond. There's no doubt that her condition has worsened. If they don't find out what's wrong with her soon, she may never wake up. At that moment, her husband told Dr. Foreman a secret. It turns out that Trace was hallucinating because he and Trace had killed his father. The two families had always been neighbors. But for some reason, his father, who had always been a kind man, wouldn't let him be with Trace. His father even broke his arm to threaten to break up with Trace. In the end, the two of them had no choice but to elope. However, when his father learned the news, he took the desperate choice of ending his own life. Since then, Trace has had nightmares. Dr. Foreman sympathizes with the couple, but unfortunately, this story doesn't help to diagnose the condition. And Trace's condition continues to deteriorate. At this rate, she may not live another day. While the doctors are at their wit's end, Dr. House wonders why the man's father doesn't approve of them being together. Trace has a perfect body and a beautiful face. It doesn't make sense. Suddenly Dr. House thought of a possible explanation. He hurriedly pulled out a photo of the two of them to compare. The couple both had green eyes. And after realizing this, Dr. House had a wild guess. That Jeremy's father had an affair with Trace's mother when he was young and had Trace. So when he found out that Jeremy and Trace were together, he broke Jeremy's arm rather than allow them to marry. In the end, he couldn't stop the couple, so he ended his life in shame. There's a genetic condition called angioedema that explains all the symptoms they both had. But that's just Dr. House's guess. To confirm the diagnosis, the couple would have to undergo a hepatic artery embolization or a paternity test. Both of which would take a day. And in Trace's condition, she probably won't last a day. So Dr. House decided to treat them both first. If the treatment works, then Dr. House's suspicions are correct. As the medication for hereditary angioedema was slowly injected into the couple's bodies. For the first time, the doctors were so hopeful that their patients wouldn't get better. Unfortunately, as they open their eyes and slowly regain consciousness, this love affair is destined to end in tragedy. If you like my channel or enjoy watching me dance, please leave a comment in the comment section saying dance. Adam.